Renunciation is a legitimate practice in the spiritual journey. In fact, we often come to our spiritual journey because of a realization that there is something that we need to renounce. And the 12 steps, it's step one, basically, that my life has become unmanageable and I am powerless over blank. And it is that word or that thing that is in that is in the blank um, that that we renounce generally <laughs> my life has become unmanageable and I am powerless over my um, addiction to alcohol my life has become unmanageable and I am powerless over my addiction to sex and pornography or food um, I don't know, there's apparently hundreds of different ways we can apply uh, the 12 steps or that we can uh, begin a spiritual practice with a, a renunciation. There's also another side to the spiritual path, which is indulgence, actually. And it's kind of this, uh, the contrast between the Buddha that you may have seen who's in the full lotus position and you know he, his, his stomach is caved in the, the idea of this buddha who has um or, or this siddhartha Gautama who who has um renounced his own flesh right so there's the con contrast between the um the the one who had the ascetic right who has renounced the desires of the flesh is eating one grain of rice a day. And then there's that other picture or that statue of the Buddha that we see who is um, quite fat, right? And smiling and golden and dancing, right? There's this idea of indulgence. And I think they are both uh, actually legitimate parts of our spiritual journey. I think we need to know what it's like both to renounce and to indulge because they are both part of, um, of the human experience, right? Indulgence is uh, a feasting, right? And uh, there are times in our, even in our spiritual journey, well, there is no spiritual journey, right? There's, there's one journey. There, there's no, there's no secular and spiritual. It's just, it's, it's all in there together, right? But um, sometimes in the renunciation, we experience a type of feasting, right? It's like we 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 become gluttons of of the renunciation, and it can be and that can be very intoxicating in itself, uh, which I think is what Siddhartha Gautama discovered at some point is that there's just as much indulgence in the practice of the ascetic as there is in in just indulgence itself, right? Is that we can't really escape the self, the false self, uh, through either renunciation or indulgence. And this confounds us. <laughs> and oftentimes we go back and forth. And I think this is the story of the addict. From what I understand, there's really only one addiction. There's one core addiction that manifests itself in many ways or in, with many different faces. But the one addiction is our addiction to self. And that's not the self with the capital S. That's not the one self. This is, we are addicted to our own storyline. We get caught up in our own story, and this is where we suffer. We suffer in our own storyline. This is, we get trapped in there. We start thinking that we are, um, that we are the center. And, and the funny thing is, is, it is true that we are the center. Yet, not when we're engaged in that shallower aspect of our being. It is true that it is the journey inward uh, where we find our salvation. Yes, the kingdom of heaven is within. There is no 
place to find the teacher except for journeying inward. Now we may encounter the teacher in diverse and many forms on the outside of us, but in reality, the true teaching is always coming from within. So you can, um, you know, <laughs> fall in love with yourself that way. Every manifestation of the teacher that you have really, that you have ever seen, that you think is on the outside, is actually you, my friend. <laughs> And it is with this great joy that we can begin to take in uh, teachings which seem to come from the outside. Have you ever read a novel uh, or, or a um, you know, creative nonfiction or whatever it is, uh, some, some book, and you have the sense that you need to get to the end of it. And, and it's, like, it's like the ideas in that book are just reminding us of who we are and what we already know. I don't know if you've had that sense before, but it's something that I've heard people talk about and it's certainly a sense that I've had like, oh, I know this. Uh, I remember reading uh, C.S. Lewis, Surprised by Joy. And this was uh, just not too long after my um, initial conscious spiritual revolution when I was in my early 20s. And I remember discovering C.S. Lewis and his uh, autobiographical voice and just feeling that I had encountered myself somehow, mm -hmm. feeling that I had encountered that voice from within. I just remember I, I was not alone. I did not have that sense of being alone anymore. Right? And that is ultimately what heals us, is that sense of not being alone because we are addicted to the self with the little s we're addicted to the little i right the little migo the little ego the false self the flesh whatever word you want to use for it this this part of our being that is that is shallow which sometimes tries to convince us that it is very deep and very powerful but it is an illusion and it is what um, many have called the illusion of separate self and this is the one true addiction. And this is really the only renunciation that needs to be done. We renounce, in a sense, this addiction to the false self. We renounce our addiction to the ego. And, and then we're on the journey, right? And... <laughs> And that's where no one can quite define it for you. Yet we will pick up practices, right? We will listen to others out there and we'll be like, and we'll, we'll pick up ideas and we'll say, and, and a practice will work for us for a time to, um, to help us in this renunciation. And then that practice, strangely enough, and just kind of painfully will seem to stop working for us, right? And then it's like we have to go find another practice, or maybe we think we have to go find another practice, right? <laughs> that's, that's kind of up to you. <laughs> and the teacher who is within, right, is how does this journey play out? How do, how, do we, how do we realize ourselves as the one self, right? How do we, how do we leave that that collapsing narrative behind right what is the renunciation i think maybe it's not as much about renunciation or what we don't do as what we do do <laughs> right there's a story in the bible about a um, a spirit that is cast out of the house and if the house is not filled it comes back with seven of its friends right so th that that the demons come back stronger if it's not filled, if the house is not filled. And I think um, oftentimes we, our focus is on the renunciation. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. When in reality, what we're looking for is to be filled with the spirit or to become the spirit, to know ourselves as love, right? To experience ourselves as forgiveness as the one who releases all, to experience ourselves as the Christ, as the savior of the world. My experience is that when I 
am knowing myself as the Christ, <laughs> there's no renunciation that's taking place. <laughs> it's simply uh, a joyful experience of fullness and wholeness and oneness and love, right? And forgiveness is effortless from that place. And life is effortless from that place. Yes. So, <laughs> blessings to you, my friend, as you find yourself on this journey today. You are not alone. We are together. And we are realizing ourselves as that one love today. And wherever you find yourself in your journey along this, um, this timeline that we seem to be in, <laughs> I bless you. I bless you and, and you are not alone. Namaste. The divine in me acknowledges the divine in you. We are one. God bless you, my friend. God bless you.